Open telemetry, what exactly is it? And how does it relate to logs and Loki? My name is Jay Clifford, and in this episode of Zero to Hero, we're going to break down what exactly is this open standard, and hopefully clear up some ambiguity around orchestrating your code, the OTEL collector, and of course, how to write these logs natively into Loki. Let's start with a fundamental question. What is open telemetry? Well, at its root, it is a standard. And a standard's role within any industry is an attempt to unify a subject matter, to create a single source of truth within its execution and components. For example, let's consider an industry that has lots of standards, healthcare. The International Classification of Diseases, or ICD for short, is one of these standards, and it is globally recognized for diagnosing and classifying diseases. ICD provides a common language, if you will, which promotes interoperability between components and actors. Essentially, if someone discovers a new illness in the UK and reports it using the ICD standard, then medical professionals in other countries who follow this standard will understand what the new illness is and its qualities. Like ICD, open telemetry attempts to standardize communication within the observability domain. Open Telemetry, or OTEL for short, attempts to standardize the instrumentation, generation, collection, and exportation of telemetry data, such as traces, metrics, profiles, and logs. This promotes the idea of a vendor neutral standard, which gives engineers the power to swap and replace their observability platform with another solution without rewriting large amounts of underlining instrumentation or combine different vendor components into one solution since they all follow the same standard. Now, you might be asking at this point, this sounds great, but how do I implement a standard into my observability architecture? Luckily, OpenTelemetry is more than just a standard. It provides a set of APIs, language SDKs, and an agent which implements this standard, providing a fast track solution to achieving it. So how does this relate to logs? If you recall the episode on the structure of logs, one of the inherent challenges is the variety of components that can make up a log entry and the many ways that it can be formatted. OTEL attempts to standardize this with a consistent set of attributes and formatting. That all being said, some of these attributes are still optional. Here is a high level overview of the log entry. Typically, these log components are compressed for transportation across the network. When unpacked, however, these log entries usually appear in a JSON structure format, incorporating the components you see in this example. Why don't we see this in practice by revisiting our carnivorous greenhouse application and integrating the open telemetry SDK to generate OTEL logs. I will be using KillerCoder once again, but you can find both the sandbox and the repository linked in the description below. Let's start by setting up our Python development environment. First, we'll create a new virtual Python environment and then install our application dependencies using the provided requirements file. Next, we'll install the necessary OpenTelemetry packages to orchestrate our application. The first is OpenTelemetry distro. This contains both the OpenTelemetry API and SDK. The second is OpenTelemetry exporter OTLP. This package allows us to export these logs within the OTLP format, otherwise known as the Open Telemetry Protocol. Let's take a look at our main.py file to configure our current logging framework to use the newly installed OTEL packages. The first thing we need to do is include our dependencies. This includes a function for setting the global logger to the OpenTelemetry logs module. 
The OTLP logs exporter, which will export our OTL logs via JRPC to the OTL collector. And then a few classes from the logs SDK to handle the processing of our app logs. Next, we'll create a log provider using the log provider class. This will act as the logging mechanism for our application. Within its creation, we have also provided the resource parameters and created some static resources, including a service name and instance ID as static tags. These will become a little bit more interesting later in the demo. We will then use the set logger provider to set our new OTEL log provider as the global logger. We can also configure some attributes of our logger as well. For instance, we can create an exporter to attach to our log provider for exporting our logs within the OTLP format and also the batch log record processor for creating batches of these log entries before they are sent. Lastly, we'll initialize a default logging handler with our new handler that we've just created. Now, since we have configured the primary log handler to act as the OTEL logger, we actually do not need to change any more of our code. We can simply call the standard logging class along with the type of log we would like to raise. For example, we could do something like login.error, login process failed unexpectedly, and then this log is triggered, it will automatically be converted to the OTLP format and exported. So we're exporting our newly formed open telemetry log entries from our application, but where are they all going? The open telemetry collector is a vendor agnostic agent that can receive, process and export open telemetry data. The collector's role allows you to offload, aggregate your telemetry data, enrich it, and then send it to an open telemetry compatible endpoint such as a storage provider like Loki. The interesting concept within the OTEL collector is that although passing information within the pipeline is open telemetry formatted, both input and output components can be of different data types. For example, there is both a Prometheus input and output component. In our case, however, since Loki has a native open telemetry endpoint, we do not require any passing within the open telemetry collector. The open telemetry collector is configured using a YAML formatted configuration file. Let's take a look at a basic configuration for log collection. Our configuration can be broken into the initialization of components and then the creation of the telemetry pipeline. Let's start with the components. In our case, we're initializing the OTLP receiver with both a JRPC and HTTP endpoint. This allows our application and infrastructure to push OTEL telemetry data directly via these protocols. By default, the JRPC endpoint is exposed on port 4317 and HTTP on 4318. Next, we have our exporter. This outputs open telemetry formatted telemetry data to a chosen endpoint. Our endpoint in this case is pointing directly to the Loki native open telemetry endpoint. More on this in a moment. Lastly, we build out our pipeline. This can be broken down into metrics, logs, traces, and profiles. Within this tutorial, we are only focused on ingesting and outputting logs. So our pipeline is actually quite basic. When we start to look at more advanced topics in this series, we can start to consider how other telemetry data types can be used for in collaboration with logs to extend this config. The last piece of the puzzle is preparing Loki for open telemetry based logs. The primary feature we need to enable is to allow structured metadata. I'm going to pause it right there and go down one final rabbit warren. What is structured metadata? So remember that Loki's index comes in the form of labels. Labels essentially add metadata to our log streams so that we can improve query runtime and identify different log streams. 
However, there's a problem. One of the primary label rules is that we should be bounded and used sparingly. That's a problem for all of the metadata that comes with our open telemetry formatted log entries. So what do we do with attributes such as trace ID, trace flag, attributes, and so on? This is why we created structured metadata. Structured metadata is a way to attach extra metadata to our log entries without indexing them or including them in the log line content itself. Examples of useful metadata are Kubernetes pod names, process IDs, or any other label that is often used in queries, but has high cardinality and or is expensive to extract at query time. Now, you might be asking, can I decide what goes into structured metadata and what becomes labels? The answer is yes. My colleague Ward will be creating an upcoming video covering this in more depth. We do this by setting the allow structured metadata to true under the limits config within our Loki configuration file. All of our pieces are now in place. So let's spin up our demo and start producing some logs. First, we will spin up our observability stack using Docker Compose up. This includes Loki, Grafana, and of course, the OpenTelemetry collector. Next, we will run our app locally since we've already installed the OTEL packages to our local virtual Python environment. Then we can find our carnivorous greenhouse app on localhost port 5005. Let's create some logs as we usually do Turn on the bug mode to make some more interesting logs. Finally, let's jump into our Grafana instance and take a look at our logs through the Explore tab. We see two labels based on the static resources we created earlier, service name and service instance ID. This is because both attributes are part of the default list of metadata that automatically becomes labels rather than structured metadata. I highly recommend checking out the documentation for the full default list. And of course, this list is also configurable. Let's run a query and take a look at our log entries. If we expand our log entry, we can actually see far more metadata fields based on those generated by the OTEL collector, such as severity number, telemetry SDK language, and scope name. Lastly, let's run a query against our structured metadata. In this case, we have a metadata attribute called code line number. This tells us a specific line from where the log entry was called. Let's filter by a specific code line and check the result. This gives us the ability to treat our structured metadata like labels, even though they aren't indexed. This has the benefit of not having to apply line passing first to look for these attributes, saving in overall performance per query. And with that, we'll close the book on OpenTelemetry for now. However, I don't think this will be the last time you'll hear from OpenTelemetry. Make sure you check out Ward's fantastic tutorial on its release, and there is going to be plenty more content from me on Otel in the future. For now, we'll move on to our next ingest video, all about the Fluent D and Fluent Bit plugins for Loki. We are also cooking up some deployment videos to be released in the not too distant future. Until then, my name is Jay Clifford. Stay curious.